Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you didn't know, I am an actor. Most of my acting work has been in Thailand, appearing in Thai BL series. And this is a new little video series I'm making where I talk about all the different characters I played in each series and just kind of reminisce about the good times and also share some behind the scenes stories. So in today's video, we're gonna be starting off with my very first role, which was Ram in My Engineer. So I'm gonna start off with how I got the role, preparing for the role, what it was like playing the character, what it was like being on set, and I'll share some personal thoughts on this series and also how my life kind of changed quite a lot afterwards. And also perhaps the tiniest bit of tea may be spilled. This in my cup, it's coffee. You know, coffee, tea, drink, spilling, is all the same thing. So anyway, before I tell you about how I got the role, I think it's important to give you some backstory on what I was doing before my engineer. So for those of you who don't know, I moved to Thailand when I was 20 years old and I was not able to speak a single word of Thai. I moved there and then started studying the language. So whether you can speak Thai or not, the way that most people get their start in the entertainment industry is by casting for TV commercials, which is what I did. And the great thing about TV commercials is that you don't need to speak to be able to get jobs because in most TV commercials, there aren't actually a lot of speaking lines. So the very first commercial I ever got was this one for Est Cola. It's a fairly popular soda soft drink brand in Thailand not the biggest but it's pretty cheap which I think is why it's quite popular it's cheaper than like your Cokes and Pepsis or whatever and then I appeared in a bunch of other stuff like KFC, Pizza Hut, Nissan and all these random things also cup noodles so altogether, I think I appeared in around 20 different commercials and all the time that I was casting and shooting commercials I was studying Thai as well with the end goal being to one day hopefully act in a TV series. So I was with a modeling agency at the time and they often sent their actors to one of the biggest Thai TV station, which was Channel 3. It's just a normal to air TV station, but they make a lot of popular dramas and a lot of the actors and actresses at the station go on to be like pretty big. And they took me in to meet with one of the big producers and I was super nervous. I could speak conversational Thai, but obviously having started to learn Thai at 20 years old, I had a bit of an accent. And the thing is with the entertainment industry, but not just the entertainment industry, just life in general, obviously it's not what you know, it's who you know. So who you know is important, but it's also whether that person just straight up likes you or not. I'm not saying I did a great job. It wasn't an audition or anything. I literally just went in and like said hi and just had a chat but I could tell this person wasn't really into me. And they were like, how tall are you? I was like, um, 174 centimeters. And then she was like, nah, I, I, like he's too short. He's too short because all the actresses nowadays are starting to get really tall. And then she gave me an example of an actress who was like one of the tallest actresses in the industry. But like apart from her, everyone is like quite short, like 150 centimeters to like 160 something. Not that there wouldn't be other chances after that, but that was kind of like a big chance. And after that happened, I could kind of tell that the agency I was with at the time was kind of just like, what are we going to do now? Until one fateful day, I got an Instagram DM. And it was from the staff of my engineer asking me if I'd be interested in auditioning for a character called Ram. And that was when my life turned upside down. Not really, but it kind of did. Because I was knocked back from a few places because of my language or lack of language skills. It was like Ram was like, not destiny, but luck was really on my side because as you guys know now, for those of you who see my engineer, Ram is half Thai. I am also half Thai. And he also doesn't talk that much, which was perfect for me at the time because my Thai was fine, not great, fine, but good enough to say the lines that Ram says on the show, obviously. Although I did have to practice those a lot to get the pronunciation right. But when I got the description of the character, I was like, not overly confident, but I was pretty, I don't know. I just had a really good feeling. I was like, I think I can get this. I think I can get this good. I wasn't overly confident, but when I read the description of the character, I was kind of like, oh, this could be my chance. And it was. Because your boy got the role. Obviously. I went into the audition. There was about six, seven people in a room. I read the lines. Then I did some improvisation. Like they just gave me some scenarios. I, th I can't remember what it was. I actually had to remember. They said it was me. So I had to play Ram and there was a member of staff, this lady, and she was this girl that I was interested in. And they were like, she's like, some other dude is going to take her home. And you have to be like, nah, you're going to take her home. And I was like, all right, I got this. <laughs> Not really, but I, I guess I did a good enough job because I got it. 
I got the role. Like the vibes in the room really good. Like up until this point in my life, I've auditioned for like quite a few different roles and you can't tell whether you get the job or not, but you do get a pretty good like feeling of how well it went. And I had a pretty good feeling it went well. Everyone's like smiling and they're like looking at each other and it's like, actually while I was in there, one of the producers was like, yeah, but how tall is Talay again? And then someone was like, he's like 177 centimeters. And then like, oh, Perth, how tall are you? And I was like, 174. See, the height. Height is like a surprisingly big deal in the Thai entertainment industry. I don't know if it's a big deal overseas as well, but in Thailand, it's quite a big deal. So a lot of people lie like on their resumes about how tall they are. Most people add a few centimeters. So just... And that's not me spilling tea, I'm just thirsty. But just for the record, when you see your favorite actor's height, you might want to just like cut a few centimeters off that because we lying. They were concerned because Talay was taller than me in real life. And in the story, Ram is supposed to be taller than King. And then another one of the producers was like, ah, it's fine. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just put something in his shoes, which is actually what ended up happening. I had quite thick inserts in my shoes, which is also why I wore high tops on the show. It was pretty thick. I think I had around like this much extra height in my shoes. And honestly, it was hell to walk in. My legs got very tired and it was very awkward to run. Luckily, I don't recall having many scenes where I had to run, but the scenes where I was walking the dogs and they were pulling me, that was pretty rough. I didn't roll my ankle or anything like that because, you know, the high tops had the support, but um, I do not miss wearing those inserts in my shoes at all. Nasty stuff. Anyway, back to the audition. I got the job and then obviously the next step was the workshops. Now, for those of you who don't know, in Thailand, usually when the cast has been decided for a TV series, the next step is to do acting workshops. So workshops are a place where you brush up on your acting skills, you learn new acting skills, and it's also a great place to develop chemistry among the cast. So we, it's like you just play a bunch of games, really, but it's all kind of acting games, emotional games, and these and like repetition and these kind of things, acting stuff. I don't know. It's kind of weird to explain. It's surprisingly just like you're just playing around a lot. This was my first time acting in Thai. So honestly, I was like scared shitless because I didn't know anyone. I wasn't super fluent and the Thai I could speak at the time wasn't super colloquial. It was quite formal and just very polite. And I could tell everyone was kind of just like being nice to the foreign guy. They're just like, he like <laughs> they didn't like try to like make fun of me too much or mess around too much because they were probably worried I didn't get it. And to their defense... <laughs> I didn't get a lot of the jokes, but you know, over time, time improved and it got better. And I remember the first time I met Talay, so it was the very first workshop. I was the first one to get there, which was also super nervous because I was the only one sitting on the couch. So I had to like wait for people to come in. And I, don't know, I was like, weird. Like, I didn't want to introduce, introduce myself first. So people would come in, I'd be like, oh, oh, hi, um, I'm Perth, I'm, I'm playing around in the series. And they'd be like, oh, hi, I'm like, whatever. And I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know, it's just social awkward stuff. Anyway. The next person that walks in is Talay and he has super long hair, like down to like a little bit past his shoulders. He looked like, I don't know, like a stereotypical university student who's like really into rock. <laughs> and I was like, honestly, my first reaction was in my head. I was like, I'm playing a couple with this guy. But he was obviously uh, really nice as he is. And uh, yeah, I think like we got along quite well. Like there was a lot of walls at the time, but those were just kind of like language barriers and just general early 20 awkwardness. One important thing to add at this part of the story is that this group of actors for My Engineer was actually not the final group of actors that appeared on the show. Actually, My Engineer went through a lot of changes. Like a lot of Thai TV series, I don't know why, but there's just so much drama when Thai people want to make a TV show. Like, things get cancelled, last minute casting changes. Any of you guys who are fans of Thai dramas, I'm sure you are familiar with it. The very final cast that appeared on the screen was the fourth generation. What I initially casted for and got the role in was like the third set of cast members and it was a good cast that everyone was really nice and really cool this was the old cast of my engineer and you can also see that ram and king were like a little bit different as well in terms of like the hairstyle and also we looked a little bit younger because we were super young when we shot this the hairstyle that ram ended up having was also kind of cool but i also did like ram with his hair down as well but i guess the thing is if ram and king also both of them if both of them have their hair down um 
not that the, not that we look similar because our face is obviously different, but I think the final hairstyles we went with make a nice distinction between the two characters in terms of personality and just general appearance. But I also like the original one, but obviously like this is just my personal preference, but I think um, Talay looks better when he has his hair parted as opposed to having it like like one one thing. But I, I like both of them. They're both pretty cool. And we actually started shooting the show with that cast. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but we actually shot quite a lot of the show. We shot around 30, maybe 35%. We shot a lot of like key scenes. For example, we did do the boxing scene where Ram has the little boxing match with Bun. And the tattoos were also different. So this is um, a picture of the tattoos I had in the old version. Pretty cool. Looks uh, pretty, you know, futuristic. Bit of a cyborg vibe going on. But one thing I did like about that particular shoot was that I was in way better shape. I was younger then. I was hitting the gym a lot. And I hadn't discovered cinnamon rolls. I was really happy with how I looked then. Then then came when we had to actually shoot it and I was just already hooked on the cinnamon rolls and a little bit more pudge than I would have liked. But also one really cool thing about the boxing scene when we shot it in the old version was that we actually shot it like on top of a building. That it was like on top of the school building as opposed to being on a basketball court, which was pretty cool. And also it wasn't planned, but it actually started raining that day. And I remember people like, oh, should we stop the shoot or should we just keep going? We ended up shooting it in the rain which was super duper cool. And I would have liked to have seen what that actually looked like. I don't think I ever saw the footage from that. So that was a bit of a shame. One other pivotal scene that we shot was the tent kiss. That is correct. There were two different iterations of the Ram King tent kiss scene. And I don't wanna brag or nothing like that, but I do actually have the footage on my phone. I won't show it, but I might make it available on Patreon. We'll see what happens. Let me just explain it to you. It was a lot more of a sweet tamer kiss than what was in the final product. One actually really funny thing about that is that I'm pretty sure me and Talia had to shoot that kiss scene in like second week of shooting. And we were like, what already? Because we still weren't like super close at that point. And just out of nowhere, they're just like, oh yeah, we're shooting the kiss scene in a few days. We're like, oh my God. I don't think I'm ready for this. So there was a little bit of, um, I don't know, like shyness, apprehensiveness, I guess. It was just like a short little, 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 little kiss scene. Wasn't, wasn't quite as passionate or as long. Not that it was super long, the one that was in the final product, but sorry, is this creepy? Is this creepy? No, you guys will know this stuff, right? The one in the final product was a bit more continuous. This one was like, just more like, L let me show you with my hands. It was just kind of like, And that's it. It's about the best I can show you without actually showing you. The reason why we ended up shooting it so early is because um, I think they wanted it for the promo video to go and show it to like sponsors and stuff like that. So yeah, I think all the kiss scenes were shot in the first couple of weeks of shooting, which is like fine. It's like whatever. And so after we had shot all that, they were like, all right, we're going on a little break for two weeks. And then the show just never came back. Then I found out later why uh, it never came back. And I think this is the issue with a lot of productions that go under in Thailand. It's money issues. I don't know the exact details. I mean, I do, but I can't share those details. It would be uncouth of me. But yes, for reasons, financial reasons, for a while, my engineer just, just stopped. Until about a year and a half later, uh, I got the call and they're like, we're shooting my engineer again. Are you in? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know about that. Yes, I'm in. Let's do it. I don't know. If somebody asked me, like, do I think the final version or the version we shot before that was better? I honestly couldn't answer you because they both have things that I think were good and things that I think weren't as optimal as they could be. But the thing is, when we shot the previous version that was unfinished, at that time, there weren't as many tie BLs out as there were when it actually ended up being on air. So there was always a part of me that thought had it actually ended up coming out at that time, maybe it would have like blown up 
a little more. I think at that time, it was around the Love by Chance era. And at that time, yeah, BLs were still pretty new. And especially in Thai society, like they weren't a big thing yet. Like there was like Sotus and a few other ones, but it wasn't like obviously like how it was now or even four years ago where there's like a bajillion BLs being produced and made every single year. Obviously, as you guys know, as fans of BL, the amount of BLs coming out now is just insane. But also not just from Thailand. I mean, especially Thailand, but uh, a lot of countries throughout Asia and other parts of the world. I've had fans be like, I used to watch every single BL that came out and now like it's literally impossible. Even if I wanted to watch every single series that came out, I couldn't. There's just not enough time in the day. Another thing is that all these BLs are spread out all across different platforms all over the internet and some aren't even accessible in your country. <laughs> but with the help of today's sponsor NordVPN, baby, we can fix that. With just the click of a button, you can change your online geographical location so you can get access to things such as TV shows, news articles, and other great media that wouldn't usually be available just because of where you live. Also guys, when you connect to NordVPN, they also have threat protection. Just in case you didn't know, there are weirdos out there on the internet. Weirdos and criminals. Trying to steal your personal information and my personal information. But NordVPN protects you by encrypting all the information coming in and out of your computer, making it almost impossible for those weirdos to get your info. It also scans your downloads to check for malware, warns you about dangerous websites, and blocks those annoying pop-up ads. And by the way, one NordVPN account can be used on up to six different devices. So you can be protected on your computer, your phone, your tablet, and even some TVs. Now that's value. <laughs> if you're interested in getting NordVPN, you can use my code PERTH at the checkout, or use my link which is available down in the description below. You get an extra four months on a two year subscription as well as a big discount. It's a great way to get a deal on the world's fastest VPN and also support my YouTube channel. Back to BL chat. So yeah, had it come out of that time, would the reception have been different? Perhaps, but this is just a very personal thing. My tie wasn't super good at the time, although it would have gotten better, but I think it coming out when it did, like when I was doing all the promotional material and things like that, I was a lot more comfortable than I would have been had it come at that time. But still, that that's always kind of in the back of my mind, like a little, a little what if. But one really great thing about it is that it was the same director. So the director who shot the one that was incomplete and the one that was complete was the same director, um, Pilit, who was a really nice guy, a really awesome director. And then there were a few cast changes and that's the final cast that ended up being on the show. So for those of you guys who don't know, so In Touch ended up playing Boss, but in the version before that, In Touch actually played, I can't remember the character's name. Uh, the In Touch actually played the, is that his name? Oh my God, this is so embarrassing, I can't remember. I think it, I think it was the. I was wrong, the actual pronunciation was. The. So In Touch actually originally played that character in the previous iteration and then um, he got recast as boss in the new one, which was pretty cool. And then also there was the addition of Ryan, who was the Chinese actor who played Meg with In Touch. That was an interesting experience because Ryan didn't speak English and he didn't speak Thai. I think the original plan was for him to like study Thai. They would write the script phonetically and he was going to speak it like that. Unfortunately, it did not work. So he ended up just um, doing the script in Chinese and then they dubbed Thai over the top. And I remember during filming, like that was a pretty big challenge for In Touch because In Touch also didn't speak a lot of English. So they don't speak English. In Touch mainly speaks Thai. Ryan mostly, not mostly, Ryan only speaks Chinese. So Ryan would have all of his script translated into Chinese. Well, I mean, Mandarin, I guess, to be specific. Not that it matters. Does it matter? I guess it matters. I guess. All the details matter. So they would know what each other was saying. So taking that into consideration, I think they both did a really good job. If it was me, I think I would have got quite frustrated, but In Touch was really cool about it the whole time. Once again, not me spilling tea, I'm just thirsty. So let's talk about what it was like playing Ram. So this this is my first acting job ever in a TV sh- A TV series? in TV series and not speak my native language. It was kind of nervous to act at times also because I didn't have that many lines. So there was, I felt like there was a pressure on me to say the lines properly. Cause you don't want to be the guy where you like don't have many lines and everyone's talking, talking, talking with their lines and it gets to your line and you mess it up. And they're like, cut. They're like, it's fine. It's fine. And then after like the fifth or sixth time, you're like, guys, I'm really sorry. They're like, it's fine. Just 
relax and, you know, just, just say it how you normally would. It's like, okay, I got this. I didn't really have much of that, but there were some times where I couldn't just be 100% natural because in the back of my head, I was like, got to get the pronunciation right, got to get the intonation right. So I wasn't as free as I would have liked to have been, not for a lack of practice. I practiced a lot, but it was just the nerves. The nerves got to me a bit, but I don't know if that really comes through a lot when you actually watch the show. I mean, me personally, I can tell because I remember what I was thinking at particular points in time when I was shooting particular scenes. But I think from the viewer's point of view, I don't think it was that obvious. I don't know. You tell me. Apart from the, the from the language thing, I found it very natural to play the character. I felt it came to me like pretty quickly. I don't know. I just felt like I really got the vibe of the character from the get go. Like the the mannerisms, the facial expressions, just the general demeanor. Because I mean, like with all characters you play, I mean, it's kind of like a I don't know. I don't want to sound pretentious, but I kind of feel like it's like a actor's philosophy kind of thing. But I kind of feel like every character that you play they're already inside you, not that particular character. I'm not saying there's like a Ram inside of me or a, like a Joker inside of me. But what I'm saying is all of us have our own personalities. I think you have to find the character inside of you somewhere. But I felt like Ram had so many things that were already similar to me. So it wasn't that hard to like kind of pull, pull him out, if that makes sense. Did that sound sexual? No, nah, I don't think so. I'm not saying the role of Ram wasn't challenging. It had its challenging moments, but in a weird way, I felt at home playing Ram, which was pretty cool. Um, this is a funny fact. When we were shooting the show, as you guys know, Ram's mum speaks English. I think she was from like Russia or something like that. I think originally they were planning for her to speak Thai and they gave her the script and she was like, I don't think I, don't think I can do this in Thai. And then they were just like, all right, well, you can just do it in English, which I think was actually a kind of cool touch because, you know, Ram is half. So it's like kind of emphasizes the halfiness because he speaks Thai with his dad and English with his mum. Also, Ram's dogs, the three huskies, those dogs were, um, <laughs> they were just the dogs of a friend of one of the producers on a show. Those are not trained dogs. They're just kind of regular house dogs. And um, they were naughty. They were a bit hard to handle at times, like, the walking scenes were rough because they were just all walk in different directions. I think there was like a mum, a dad and the child and the child was like still kind of young, a bit crazy, a bit out there. The handling of the dogs was quite chaotic. Also, Thailand is a super hot country, not the best country to be raising huskies. So, you know, also them being on set for a while, like they couldn't be working for too long at a time because obviously they're going to get hot. So they would go like chill with some like cold water, hang out in a nice air conditioned room with some fans on and stuff like that. But um, like it, you can't tell with the final product, but there was a lot of chaos going on behind the scenes with those, those dogs. So let's talk about what life was like after my engineer. So before it was on air, I personally had honestly, relatively high expectations of it. I thought it was going to be pretty big and it was f quite popular. <laughs> I was going to say fairly, but I was like, no, oh, it's a little bit, it was a little bit more popular than fairly. It was quite popular. Um, I just thought it was a lovely story. Um, it was like, it had good comedy bits. It had some drama, had some nice touching moments. I think the cast was nice at that particular point in time. I don't think there were many people like me and BL in terms of like actors who weren't like super fluent in Thai. So I kind of thought like me and Talay, like as a couple was like quite, I wouldn't say a breath of fresh air but perhaps a new wind on the horizon. What I'm trying to say is I thought it would just be some fresh. And um, the reception and build up to my engineer was really big. There were a lot of things planned, I believe, such as like, we we're gonna um, watch episode one, like with fans in like outdoor cinema kind of setting. But like a few weeks before it was on air, it was like, bam, COVID. So kind of all those plans went to shit. <laughs> but, I guess there were positives and negatives about being on air during COVID. So obviously the negative would be that we couldn't actually have a lot of interactions with fans of the show outside. We could only do it through social media. But then a positive of it being on air during COVID was that everyone was stuck at home. So maybe more people watched it 
because of COVID. So I guess thank you, COVID. <laughs> nah, I don't know. But I think COVID was a time where a lot of people who might not have actually... Oh, excuse me. My undershirt is showing. Um, Maybe a bunch of people who weren't into BL, I think, got into BL because, you know, stuck at home and finding new hobbies to get into and things like that. But I remember when we were on air because in Thailand, obviously... I, I love you guys, but no, it's a thing where each episode is on air. We try and get it to number one uh, trending on Twitter. And every week we were trying to get it to number one. But there was this other show that would always take the number one spot. It was arguably the most popular BL show of all time together. It was also on the same day, about an hour before. Luckily, uh, it started before my engineer. So it finished before my engineer. So my engineer, I think for the last couple of episodes, was able to get to the number one spot, which was pretty cool. But another thing to do with popularity and success is luck. I think luck is a huge factor, especially for actors. I think perhaps had my engineer been on air in a period of time where there were like not a lot of other big shows, it perhaps maybe would have taken off more, but you can say that about anything. It's all ifs and buts. Now, my engineer was not, you know, not a dud at all. Obviously, it was a success, but I always felt like it could have been bigger had the stars aligned a little bit more, but you know, obviously no regrets because being a mind engineer changed my life as an actor and just as a regular human being. I'm pretty sure before the first episode of Mind Engineer was on air, I had like 6,000 followers on Instagram. And by the time it finished, I was at around 400 and something thousand, maybe 380,000, something like that. So yeah, that was crazy. Honestly, um, I I'm not a big social media guy. I do it because it's part of my job. But like, I'm not saying like, oh, like, I hate it. Like, I don't hate it. It's just, if I was not an actor, I don't think I would be on social media at all. I mean, I was on social media before being an actor, but all I did was, um, I was on Twitter just to follow my favorite um, manga translators, <laughs> which is funny. I haven't touched that Twitter account for a while, but um, when my engineer was on air, dude, I was on social media all the time, especially because I was stuck at home during COVID too. So I would just be like searching up my engineer hashtags and reading YouTube comments when after the episodes were posted on YouTube to see what the fans were saying about it and things like that. And be uh, constantly checking my Twitter followers to see like how much it was going up by. Man, those were the days, young actor. <laughs> the whole time that my engineer was on air, unfortunately, yeah, there was COVID, but I think it finished airing in around May. And luckily, COVID cleared up enough that we got to do a fan meet for my engineer in, I think it was August of 2020, perhaps? <laughs> I don't remember the details. But that fan meet was special. That was my first fan meet experience ever. First time singing and playing piano on stage in my life. I don't know if you guys remember that little old rendition of... Kiss me. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, anyway, I sung, I sung the song Kiss Me, and that was fun. That, that was a really nice, that was a really nice memory. It was very scary. I was very scared, but I did an okay job. I mean, if I went back and listened to it, I don't think I would have been very happy about my performance, but for me at that time, I think it went well. And like most people at fan meets, I cried. It was very emotional because we got that thing, like anytime you have a fan meet or like in my case, I guess, the Kim Porsche tour as well. They always like to surprise us. So we're like watching this thing on the screen. We turn around and everyone's got their phone lights on and they sung the song from the show to us. And we all cried. This is a picture of me crying. So yeah, it was a really good time. Really good memories and really good experiences. So I'm very grateful for uh, everything that happened with that. And um, I think one of the things that I'm most grateful for for the entire experience was the people I met because uh, I'm still friends with a lot of those guys, obviously, um, especially good friends with Talay. Like, okay, this is not me spilling tea. But things are about to get real for a second. May I say this? Yes, I may, because it's my channel. But in my opinion, in my humble opinion, Perth Lay or Ram King is one of the most underrated ships of all time. Now, am I just saying that because I'm in it? Perhaps. But I think I can separate myself and look at it from a subjective point of view. But I think that it's a really nice relationship. I really like the relationship that the two, that the, that the two characters shared. 
stuttering now. Nice. It's just, I just feel like it was a very pure, relatively mature, <laughs> wow, pronunciation, mature. But no, I think it's like, it was quite a, like a mature open and, and, and just kind of drama free love between two characters, which was something that I really liked. I mean, you can criticize, you know, a lot of relationships between characters in BL or even on BL media and say that, oh, this is toxic and that is toxic. But I think a lot of those things exist in real life. Whether you should show them on screen or not is like another thing because it might help like cause certain issues to perpetuate. But I wouldn't say that a lot of these like toxic relationships are unrealistic. I think, especially in Thailand, that's the thing is like when My Engineer came out, I think uh, the Thai media companies were aware of the foreign audiences. But at this time, I still think a lot of them were made for Thai audiences. And I think you'll find that like a lot of the tropes, especially the causes for conflicts in these shows are very standard in Thai media. This is not like me saying, I think, that makes things okay or whether they're correct or not but i'm just saying like the facts like in thailand as a thai viewer a lot of these things just kind of regular but you know as like sensibilities change and what's okay and not okay in societies changes over time you know i think people kind of like catch up and be like oh that's not very good but yeah at that time it was kind of normal but anyway that's me getting off track but yeah i do think ram and king was just a really nice relationship and i would have really loved to have played that story out to the end which is where we come to talk about season two coming soon <laughs> it's been four and a half years since we shot it four years since my engineer was on air and i still get people asking me when season two coming i don't really talk about it that much but um yeah i think it's been long enough um to say that i don't think we're going to be seeing a season two anytime so i'm sorry for those people that are holding out hope i don't think it's going to happen that being said if it were to happen i am a hundred percent in i mean depending on the script if it was a bad story then i wouldn't just do it for the sake of doing it it would have to be like decent but i would be more than happy to reprise the character and i've talked to talay about it and i'm pretty sure talay was like yeah like I, I i would do it like if it was good but the actors are not the people to direct questions towards because I don't know a goddamn thing. This is all I know, but there were many a time talks that the script was being worked on and the script is almost done. And, you know, we were told like, oh yeah, well, we should be starting to get ready for it around this time. And then it just keep getting pushed back. I mean, I honestly do think COVID got in the way a lot, but there were, I think, there was still enough time and enough opportunities to really get it done. Why it did not get done? Honestly, I don't know why. I don't know why it didn't get done. But um, like we were continuously told that it was going to happen. And when we were doing like work, like usually when you like, for example, if you do magazine shoots or you take interviews in the media, usually the last question I'll ask you, oh, like, do you have any upcoming projects you'd like to talk about? And, you know, we were told that you can say, you know, my engineer season two is coming soon. Love that word coming soon. Um, so, you know, we weren't lying. We were told that that's what was going to happen. Although I do feel a sense of guilt for, you know, continuing something that turned out to not happen and um, kind of raising people's like expectations. So if I did that, I apologize. But um, we were also disappointed when it kind of like never happened. Time just kept passing and we we're just kind of like, when's it going to happen? That being said, uh, I don't even know if you guys have read... Um, the sequel novel to My Engineer called Space, which is actually, so it's like My Engineer is all about Bondun, that's like their story, and then Space is where Ram and King become the central characters, and that was what I believe that the second series was going to be based on. It's pretty weird. The characters just kind of take a huge U-turn. Ram gets really weird. Like, it's not the Ram that I knew. He gets really jealous and just kind of, like, turns into a huge weirdo. Um, the relationship at times gets what I would consider a little bit toxicity. No, it gets a little bit like I would feel weird and uncomfortable doing some of the things that happened in the novel because I feel like it's like a different character. It's not the same character anymore. But on the note of sequels, I actually had a few ideas of my own because Talay and myself, we've gotten a lot older now. When we shot that, I was 25. I hadn't even turned 26 yet when I shot. I don't remember. Yeah, I was 25, turned 26, today was 24, turned 25 when we shot it. That year, the year it was on air, I turned 26. Guys, I'm turning 30 <laughs> in July of 2024, which is this year, the, the year I'm shooting this video. I'm turning 30. So, 
hey, I know I may still look young, but I think I might be a little bit too old now to pass as a university student, especially a first or second year university student. So I kind of had some ideas for what another story between Ram and Kim could be. They're both quite out there and kind of silly, but just listen, I think they're kind of interesting. One is like Ram and King re-meet again as adults. So King sees someone who looks like Ram, but he doesn't have the tattoo. And obviously tattoos are a big thing for Ram like his identity and the meaning of the tattoos and such. And I thought it would be like a pretty interesting twist. Like, I don't know if this is just shock value or it's actually worth it for the story, but I thought it would be interesting if like the tattoo was gone, he actually got it removed for some reason. So King doesn't know if it's Ram or not. And because they haven't seen each other for a while, at the beginning, like Ram is like, you know, like, I don't know you. But then it turns out it is Ram. And then by the end of the series, um, he has, you know, him and King get together and then he has a new tattoo in the old spot, which has a new meaning. I haven't thought of what that would actually be yet, but I thought that would be pretty cool. That's one story. Now, this second one is really out there, but I thought it would be kind of cool if Ram became a detective in the, like, police. Because, I don't know, I think that kind of fits his character a little bit. It would be cool if he became a detective and he got put onto a case. And for some reason, King is the main suspect of this, like, murder case. So that would be the way they meet up again. Obviously, King is innocent. He wouldn't kill anyone. But, I don't know, I just thought it would be cool to switch up the genre and have them meet again as adults like that. In, under those circumstances, I think would be really interesting. Hey, hey, hey. Feedback. I mean, I'm not saying I can make this happen. No, actually, not at all. Don't even think I'm saying... These are just some crazy ideas that I came up with if it ever happened. I was talking about regrets before or the ifs and buts um, of the world. Yeah, I think that the no season two of My Engineer was has probably been the biggest what if of my career so far. I mean, obviously, like as an actor, as a human who like needs to live in the world, I, I had quite high expectations for season two because I'm um, like, Ram and King were the sub couple in season one and then in season two they were going to be elevated to like the main couple of the series and I was really excited to kind of like take on the role and kind of responsibility of being the main lead I thought that was going to be really fun but yeah that never happened you know whether it would have been popular or whatever I mean that's a whole different thing but another thing is like getting to work again with people you enjoy working with is super lucky so just recently in japan talei and i shot this little short japanese mini bl series for this tv show in japan and um it was so fun like as soon as uh, me and talei started acting we were both kind of just like dude this is like so chill because we just i don't know we're just really in tune i guess some people call it chemistry without sounding uh weird but yeah just like when we act together it's just like a really like chill easy time i mentioned before about Perth Lay, Ram King being an underrated ship, but I think one kind of thing that I liked about being in that ship together was that we were both very honest. What I mean is like, hey, I'm not throwing shade at anyone. I'm just saying that like Talay and I, we just, we weren't big on the fan service. Like we did a little bit here and there, but it was very natural, I felt like. But one thing that was like real. I don't think anyone was like, oh my God, a Perth until I actually dating, or they actually in love. I don't think anyone really thought that, but what you actually got to see was just a couple of dudes being dudes. But th actually that, I'm taking the piss, I'm just joking around, but um, we were actually two legit good friends. So what you saw was real friendship between two guys. And you can tell that is real because we're still friends now. Like we hang out when we have free time, like we shoot vlogs together. And make, like, like when we shoot a vlog, it makes it seem like work, but we actually just hang out like in our free time. I think one thing that like kind of helped us really get along was having similar hobbies. Like we're just huge gamers and nerds. We like similar movies. Our taste in music is a little bit different, but um, not that that really matters. You don't have to have everything be the same to be friends. Oh, by the way, the whole time shooting my engineer, obviously like everyone is like quite good friends, but I feel like Talay and I really became like good friends was when we started rehearsing for the fan meeting for my engineer, because Talay actually lived quite close to where I was living at the time. Um, I hopped on the train. He only lived two stations away, which is relatively close. And the place where we would rehearse is like kind of far and you have, to, there's no train station close by. You really have to go by car. So I would meet to lay at the train station. He would pick me up and we'd go together and then he would drop me off at the train station on the way home. So we spent a lot of time in the car together going back and forth from practice. And while we're in the car, well, at first, 
things were not awkward, but the thing is, I was very shy about singing, but Talay is not. So Talay would just be playing music on his phone and Talay would just be singing by himself and then I would just be like dead silent, just being like... Like, there was a feeling inside of wanting to sing, but I, I, just, I just couldn't do it. But I, but Talay, like, he has a good singing voice, so I was more than happy to just listen. But it wasn't awkward. Like, it was, it was really weird. Like, it was just like good vibes. Like, I was just being myself. He was just chilling, being himself. He didn't really care. I didn't really care. And then, like, we started to have, like, more, like, deep chats in the car, just, like, talking about life and things that are going good and things that are going not good and, like, stuff that we were kind of worried about or things that were annoying us about various things so yeah we really bonded on those car trips to and from practice which was really awesome yeah those those are good times that was when we became like best buds if you didn't know i actually have a discord server for members of my youtube channel so i posted in there asking people for questions that they had about anything my engineer related specifically about you know Ram King or perhaps a little bit of tea talk that people were interested in. I made a separate video answering those questions and posted it over on my Patreon. So if you've watched this video and your My Engineer itch has not been scratched, you don't feel fulfilled, you're not full from this My Engineer content, you can find some extra My Engineer content over on my Patreon page. Only if you're interested. In the q and I answer questions such as, if there was a season two of My Engineer and there were some NC-17 scenes, would you do them? Would you do it? Just do it! Nah, um... <laughs> if you had to get a tattoo, what kind of tattoo would you like to get? If you could make a fun little side story for Roman King Season 1, what kind of story would you like to do? And other fun questions like that. Anyway, it's available on my Patreon, and the link is down in the description below. Well, that was a really fun experience, uh, going back down memory lane, remembering the good times, some of the bad times, like there weren't really that much bad times. I mean, there were. I, I don't want to go into too much detail because I feel like it's a little bit unprofessional. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be making some more in the future for Cutie Pie, Kim Porsche, perhaps Why Destiny, if some of you remember that series. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and my engineer season two coming soon. See ya. <laughs> It's just funny now. It's just funny to say it. Anyway, bye guys.